trust in you. In you. in you, everybody lift your voice and say it. I trust in you. Oh Lord, I Jehovah. I trust in you. I need everybody to raise your voice and say it.
Pentecostal preacher and we were singing a little bit like this so long bye bye if you dealt with any problems any issues this week you ought to say goodbye to my pain and my sorrow so long so long so long bye in the name of Jesus hey I feel something happening in the name of Jesus we have some old school church from to help me say it in the name of Jesus that mighty name of Jesus Satan everything you tried this year Satan everything you tried this week Satan you have to go oh tell me who can stand be Say it.
Tell him yes. Tell him yes. Hey. Tell him yes. Come on, Holy Ghost Church. Tell him yes. Oh, yes, yes. Come on, lift your hands and say it. and give him glory thank you for your power thank you for your presence thank you for your anointing jesus we worship you jesus we glorify good morning and welcome to worship here at new mount isle of african methodist episcopal church in chesapeake virginia i have a question for you do you feel a little anxious as the pandemic seems to get worse and the presidential election draws to a climax. There's a whole lot of anxiety in the world. Today we want to we want to look to Paul's letter to the Philippian church as a letter to our own church and our own world to, to let us know what we can do to soothe some of the anxiety we feel. Stay tuned for the word of God later on in the service today. We've come to the first Sunday in November, and as such, we celebrate Holy Communion. So we invite you, uh, to, if you do not have it already, to, to get some bread, to get some juice in front of you so that you can celebrate Holy Communion with us at the end of the worship experience. My sister, my brother, we are so glad that you are here. Welcome to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome once again to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in the house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwells. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O, o sing, sing unto the Lord, Lord a new song, for, for he has done marvelous things. things. Make, Make a, a joyful, joyful noise unto the Lord, Lord. All, all the earth, earth sing his praises. praises. 
to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and my mighty God in three persons, blessed. Y'all help me say it, uh, holy. My, 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 that's who he is. High and lifted up. That's what the cherubim said. When they saw him high and lifted up. Lord God. Hallelujah. My, my, my. <laughs> help me say Early in the morning, everybody, early. Hallelujah. The more morning our song. Come on, help me say it from your spirit. This is you and God. This is you and God. Why you in your living room? Why you in? Just say, say he's holy, holy. That's what they said about him when they saw him. In Isaiah chapter 6, they saw him as holy. He's merciful and mighty. Help me say it. <laughs> Who is it? He's God. The blessed Trinity. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Who is it, y'all? He's God. My, my, my. God in three person. Almighty God, whom the psalmist declares to be merciful and mighty, we come before your throne of grace and your throne of mercy this Sunday morning, praying that in anxious times you will give us a peace that surpasseth all understanding. We need, Lord, your strength to make it through this week, to make it to the end of this year. We pray, God, that you would strengthen your children. Your scripture declares... We can cast all our cares on you because you care for us. And so, God, we come in this moment of prayer, casting all our cares on you. As a nation, we we have many cares as it relates to our to the pandemic and as it relates to politics and our own personal lives. We 
We pray for those who are bereaved. We we pray for those who are in pain. We we pray for those who are unemployed and those who are underemployed. We we pray for teachers and students and staff members. We pray for parents and and for children. Lord, we we pray for those who who are lost, those who are alone. God, we come down casting all our cares on you because we believe that you care for us, because we know that you care for us, because our testimony is that through many dangers, toils, and snares, you brought us safe thus far, and we believe that your grace will lead us on. God, I pray that in this worship experience, each and every person who joins us over telephone, over Facebook, over YouTube, might experience a peace that surpasses all understanding that comes from you, a God who cares for us. We pray that our nation, we pray that our world would experience a peace that surpasses all understanding, peace that can calm the divisions in our land, peace that can unite even the Father's enemies. Peace, Lord, we pray for peace in your name. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, the one whom the angels came singing that he is the Prince of Peace. We pray in his name. Together we say, Amen. <laughs>
Good morning. Once again, welcome to worship here at New Mount Olive. Uh, we want to welcome everyone to worship today, family and friends alike. Won't you, even at this time, won't you write in the comment section on Facebook or YouTube, let us know that you're here. I, I just want to, I just want to be able to shout you out, say hello, and welcome you to worship personally in the comment section. Won't you do that? It's good to be in worship with you. I cannot see you physically, but I can feel you spiritually. I can still say that I was glad when they said unto me, let us, let us, let us together go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates. You know what we would sing when we were here in the sanctuary. We would say, I'm so glad to see you. I'm so glad you came. I really, really, really am glad that you've come to worship with us today. We have just a few announcements. I'll start with uh, one on Thursday, this coming Thursday at 615, the men of the church will sit down together over the telephone. We'll meet over the telephone on our conference call line to discuss Men's Day. This year, we will celebrate Men's Day on the second Sunday in December. The second Sunday in December, we'll celebrate Men's Day. I invite the men of the church and any fat friends who would like to join in with us for Men's Day to join us on this coming Thursday on New Mount Alps conference call line to discuss and plan for Men's Day. That conference call number is 877-842-2147. Again, that's 877-842-2147. On Men's Day, of course, we also ask for a special donation from the members of the church. And so if you are a member of the church, we invite you uh, to begin even now contributing uh, to our Men's Day donation drive. We welcome you to do both of those things. For the men, please join us on Thursday uh, at 6.15 uh, to talk about Men's Day. And we invite everyone to begin contributing now to Men's Day donations. Next, I want to spend just a few moments talking about something that is so very exciting to me, and it is community outreach. We've said it many, many times, this church exists to do so much more than keep the lights on. We, we exist to worship God, but we also exist to work in the community. And so for just a few moments, I want to share with you our holiday season community outreach projects that we have done and that we plan on doing here at New Mount Island. Last night on Halloween, New Mount Olive, uh, just a few of us, just a few of us, just a few of us sat outside. And, and usually, you know, we do treats in a trunk. It's a whole lot of us. This year, we couldn't do treats in a trunk. But we still wanted to provide the children of our community a safe place to get just a little bag of candy. So that's what we did. We followed all of the guidance of local health authorities. Uh, the ch they were individually wrapped bags of candy. All persons who stood in line, they stood six feet apart. Everyone who was here was required to wear a, a, a real mask, not just a, a Halloween costume mask, but a real mask to protect them. We even gave a few masks away. And so we wanted to do something for the community. They could not go door to door in their own neighborhood, but they came here to a safe place and they got candy and some pieces of literature about our church and about our Christ. And so we're grateful that it was not just a community activity. It was an outreach project. It was an evangelistic project. And so for Sister Shaughnessy Butler, Sister Marie Murphy, Brother Calvin Hankins, Sister Tiara Langley, Brother Garland Wilson Jr., Brother Kenyatta Jehusi Jr., and all of the persons who joined us yesterday, we are so grateful for your presence and grateful for your ministry. New Mount Olive, you did ministry yesterday, uh, and we were able to we were able to, to, to continue to allow the community to have a safe place to go. That was That's already happened, but let me tell you about a few of the things we are currently doing. We partner with two schools, Portlock Primary School and Rena B. Wright Primary School, which is uh, led by our very own sister, Sheree Brown. For Portlock, uh, the school collects socks. And so they've asked us to provide for them a donation of socks. Brother Hankins has already gone out and purchased about $100 worth of socks to give to the school. And so if you would like to participate in that project for for Portlock, please donate to our missionary society today at offering time. Rena B. Wright uh, would like socks, hats, gloves, and coats, and scarves. And so we're going to do two things. One, if you would just like to donate to our missionary society so that we can purchase those things, please once again donate to our missionary society. But if, oh, if you would like to purchase a few things for yourself, and drop them off at the same time as our offering drop-offs, we invite you, in fact, we encourage you to go out, buy some hats, 
some gloves, uh, some scarves, a coat or two. Bring it to the church during offering drop-off so that we can donate that to Raina B. Wright Primary School on behalf of the New Mount Island family to the glory of God. The last outreach project, at least for now, that we're planning for the holiday season are our Thanksgiving baskets. Our practice for last year and the year before begin, had been to give away 25 Thanksgiving baskets, 10 to our friends at Portlock, 10 to our friends at Rena B. Wright, and five for members of the community. Now, we can go more than that, but we want to commit to at least that. And so we invite you to donate to our missionary society once again so that we can purchase all of our supplies so that we can ensure that the, everyone can celebrate in their own socially distant way, a very, celebrate in, in a very different kind of world Thanksgiving. As a consequence, you know very well, as a consequence of the world we live in, we will not be able to gather as we used to. And so there'll probably be a lot more and a lot smaller Thanksgiving dinners. And we want to make sure that no matter how many people are there, no matter where you're at, everyone can celebrate Thanksgiving. Because we do, as difficult as this year has been, all of us can thank God for something. And so we invite you today to donate to our missionary society so that we can make that happen in the lives of at least 25 families, at least 25 families. If you are if you are a family member, a friend of New Mount Isle, a family member or a friend, you don't have to be a member, but a family member or a friend of New Mount Isle, and you need some supplies, please have no shame in that. We exist to help one another. We exist to bear each other's burdens. If you know, if you yourself need a, thanks, a Thanksgiving basket or know someone who does, please get in contact with the church by calling 757-545-5593. That's 757-545-5593. Please leave a message on our voicemail. We'll forward that to the Missionary Society and we'll do everything we can to ensure that you have a Thanksgiving basket. I've made all of these announcements just to let you know that we are a church that exists to worship to worship God and do the work of God in the community. Of course, we need your donations. We need your time, we need your talent, and we invite you to give of your treasure so that we can do ministry in our community. We invite you now to take a moment just to give. For all of the projects I just mentioned, we invite you to give to the Missionary Society, but generally we invite you to give an offering and a tithe to the general operations of the church. At this moment, we have five ways for you to give. We invite you to do so today. You can give via our website at www.newmtolive.org slash give. That's www.newmtolive.org slash give. If you have a mobile device, you can give via the app Cash App, finding us at dollar sign New MT Olive, dollar sign New MT Olive, or the app GiveLify, finding us at New Mount Olive Ambie Church in Chesapeake, Virginia. You can mail your offering in to, to New Mount Olive Ambie Church, 1953 Campbell Stella Road, 23324. That's New Mount Olive Amy Church, 1953 Campbell Stella Road, 23, Chesapeake, Virginia, 23324. Or you can stop by during our offering drop-offs, which are between 1230 and 130 on Saturday and Sunday. And of course, we invite you not just to drop off your offerings, but to drop off your donations of hats, gloves, scarves, and coats so that we can give them out to our friends at Rena B. Right. Of course, if you yourself are in need of anything, please let us know. We want to be of service, of help to you, to all of our family members and friends. That is what Christ instructs us to do, to make sure that we take care of our family here at home and our friends out in the world. We welcome you today to give. We welcome you today if you are in need to reach out to us because we love you. Uh, and we want to make known God's love. God's compassion and God's justice in the world. To do that, we need we need offerings, and we invite you to do so today. If you have an offering you'd like to give, won't you give? Take it out now and give now. But first, raise it in the air with me and declare: This is my offering. I give it because God gave it to me. I lift it because God lifted me. I smile because God smiled on me. Thank you, my sister. Thank you, my brother. Won't you give now? Won't you give now? We are so grateful. Thank you. God bless you. And I'm actually do one more thing. Won't you share this service now on your Facebook timeline, uh, on your uh, on your Instagram? Won't you text it to somebody? Let them know that they can jump into our live service just in time to hear worship selection, just in time to hear a word from God, and just in time to join us in our communion celebration at the conclusion of the sermon. Thank you so very much for joining us. I love you. God bless you. God keep you. Won't you hear now in a worship selection?
Welcome back to the sanctuary here at New Mount Olive. Won't you journey with me in scripture? Won't you journey with me in scripture to the book of Philippians, the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter. We're going to read the first through the 14th verse. Philippians, the fourth chapter, the first through the 14th verse. First through the 14th verse. And it reads, therefore, my brothers and my sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved, in this way, my beloved. I urge you, Eudora, and I urge you, Sintashi, to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In fact, we'll end our reading right there at the seventh verse. I'll read it one more time. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let the church say. Amen. Won't you turn to your neighbor on your right or on your left? Repeat these words after me. Neighbor, oh neighbor, ease your anxieties. Ease your anxieties. I want to preach very briefly this Sunday morning on the subject, two ways to ease your anxieties. Won't you pray with me? Before thy mercy seat, O Lord, behold, your servant stands to ask the knowledge of your word, the guidance of your hand. This we ask in Jesus' name. Together we say, amen. Amen. Two ways to ease your anxieties, family. We have reached the last Sunday before Election Day. 
Many of us have waited four years to replace the wretched occupant of the White House. Perhaps that's why some states have already reported that they have received uh, more early votes in this election than they received all votes cast in the last presidential election. Yet I must admit that anxieties, yet I must admit that I, I'm still filled with anxiety. I feel with, I'm filled with anxiety about this coming Tuesday, and I, I know I'm not the only one. I, I'm filled with anxiety because what if the polls are wrong? What if someone cheats? What if someone doesn't concede? In fact, Walmart was so concerned that last week they announced that they would remove guns and ammunition from their shelves, fearing post-election violence. They, they later went back on that, but it goes to illustrate the deep anxiety that's felt across the length and breadth of this country. But of course, the election is not the only thing that many of us feel anxious over. In fact, the the election is something like the icing on the cake. Anxiety has been baked into our daily lives. According to WebMD, anxiety is a normal emotion. It's our brain's way of reacting to stress and and alerting us to potential danger ahead of us. And occasional anxiety is normal, but constant anxiety is a problem. And for many of us, it's a problem that we have faced all year long because every day we live and everywhere we go, we have to be mindful to to mask up or to stay in to avoid a dangerous and deadly disease. Uh, This week, in the midst of a pandemic, we have to go out and vote to remove a dangerous man from the most powerful office in the land. Uh, I'm sure that I'm not the only one who has this problem because uh, the New York Times lets us know that anxiety levels across the country diagnosed, clinically diagnosed anxiety has 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 spiked all throughout the year 2020 because most of us have a clear mind that life is not what it ought to be. Leaves us stress and worry about what lies ahead, i.e. anxiety. Paul understands this problem because he writes to a Philippian church that could also say life is not what it ought to be. The church in Philippi, the Church in Philippi, the Philippian church, was founded and led by a woman named Lydia. Under her tenure, it was one in which they were united. Paul says, uh, Paul says in the fourth chapter that he loves this church and he longs for this church. My joy and my crown is what he calls the Philippian church because he remembers what it used to be. But the church that he's writing to is not the church that he left. Things were not what it should have been. He writes that he urges a woman named Yodoa and a woman named Shintashi to be of the same mind. Remember, it was a church that used to be led by one woman. And under Lydia's leadership, they had unity, but it had splintered into two groups. You see, the people at Philippi gave in to something many persons in this country have given in to today. They become polarized. They become divided. And they feel as if they are forced to choose between two different people. They've fallen into this vortex of following one individual leader. And while there's certainly times, as it was when they were under Lydia's leadership, where they should be under one leader, there's a problem with the way in which they're making their decision now. The church in Philippi. Different people were following individual leaders for their own individual gain. Let me say that again. They were following individual leaders for their own individual for their own individual gain. So they were they were competing against each other. They were polarized. They were fighting each other, increasing anxieties because they were fighting not for unity, but for their own individual success. 
It reminds me of what happened last week when the rapper 50 Cent said that he was going to vote for Joe Biden over Donald Trump, even though he knew that, Don no, he admitted that Donald Trump perhaps hates black people. And he said, I don't care because my taxes will go up. It's supporting an individual leader for your own individual gain rather than for the gain of the entire community. And so what Paul says is the anxieties you feel over your own individual gain could be subsided if you follow this first way to ease your anxiety. He says, if you find the power of fellowship, you'll be able to ease your anxieties. And so he says to Yudoa and to Sintashi, be of the same mind in the Lord. Be of the same mind in the Lord. He, 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 if you don't want to listen to the words of the Apostle Paul, won't you listen to the words of the Reverend Al Green? Let's stay together. There's, some, there's power, there's more power together than there is apart. And ultimately, if we try to rise, to, if we want to unite together, we can rise together. But if we tear each other apart, we fall apart. That's why you have to be careful when you listen to two different people run for president. If one person is constantly trying to divide in the midst of a pandemic where we should be united, talks about red states and blue states. And yet there's another who says, I want to be the leader of everybody. You want to be a part of the person who wants to lead everybody because you never know where you stand with that one person who says you're either against me or you're for me. Paul says you want to be of the same mind. That fellowship eases anxieties because you can share each other's burdens. You can share each other's hardship. When one falls down, you can lift each other up. Paul says, you want to ease your anxiety? Find fellowship. Then he, he moves on and he says, once you find fellowship, he says, he says, he looks back in the past and he says, we've struggled together before. He says, I, I, I rem life is not what it ought to be now, but I remember a day when we did work with each other. I remember the joy we felt in that day. I remember the peace we had in that day. I remember the prosperity we had in that day. And he recalls the one thing that they had together that they no longer have apart. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Find that joy. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God. It's a recognition once more and again that life is not what it ought to be. Paul is not calling anyone to, to ease our anxieties by becoming comfortable with but by becoming comfortable by di with dysfunction. He doesn't say become comfortable in the midst of a pandemic. He doesn't say become comfortable in the midst of an economic downturn. He doesn't say become comfortable with a, a, a rancorous political landscape. He says things ought to become better, but this is how they become better. Not by arguing or bickering or fighting or being at war with one another, but by working together. And the thing that he says you need to find together, he says find faith, find faith. Find faith, find faith together. First, find fellowship. But number two, you want to ease your anxieties, find faith. Have a faith that looks forward, not back. A faith that says our greatness and our joy lies ahead of us and not behind us. That our world can be a better place. That the world can, that the sick can be healed. That the captive can be set free. And that is ahead of us. This is what Jesus discovers when he walks down on this earth. But when he came back down and he walked amongst the sick and he healed them. And he lived amongst the poor and he brought them good news. And he went amongst the captives and he set them free. Jesus understood that Faith is something that looks forward, not behind. That faith brings your friends and brings your family. That fellowship brings your friends and your family along. And faith allows you to walk together into a brighter tomorrow. My brothers and my sisters, we want to ease our anxieties. We ought not become comfortable in the dysfunction of our current world. But we have to have faith that it won't always be like this. Faith that weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Faith to know that we cannot stay 
stay here, but God is pushing us further. Faith, uh, faith, 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 my brothers and my sisters. And I declare unto you today that it was faith that led Jesus Christ on an old rugged cross uh, when they stretched, hung him high, and they stretched him wide. But before he hung his head and died, he had faith. Uh, and that's why he said, Father, into your hands uh, I commend my spirit, because he understood that God can do what no other power can do. And that's why he died with faith in his heart one Friday evening. But early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands and his faith became sight. He had faith that God could raise him up from the dead. And it was seen on Sunday morning. He had faith uh, that God loved him enough to lift him high. And on Sunday morning, it happened. My brothers and my sisters, it may seem dark right now. It may seem like Friday when Christ died. But we've got to have faith just to hold on a little while longer. And the testimony of Jesus Christ is uh, Sunday morning is coming. And we will get up with power in our hands. You say, power to do what? Power to heal the sick. Power to bring good news uh, to the poor. Power to set the captives free. That's what Jesus came to do and he hasn't stopped doing it because the testimony of some of us is that Jesus Christ came uh, and when I've got faith in him, it gave me faith to declare on the first day of Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous to believe that I can overcome this addiction. But faith in Jesus Christ has soothed my doubts and come my fears and the church has been my fellowship and Jesus has been the source of my faith and you too can declare that you came over some high mountain you came through some lonesome valley you made it in and out of the hospital in and out of the unemployment line because you had two things that ease your anxieties fellowship and faith that's why I get on the conference call for prayer on Tuesday because in the midst of whatever I'm I'm going through in the year 2020, I've got on the conference call line and I found fellowship in some folk who were praying for me. And now I can declare with every ounce of my being, somebody prayed for me. Sister Murphy had me on her mind. Sister Carolyn had me on her mind. Sister Sharon had me on her mind. Brother Lloyd had me on his mind. He they took the time and prayed for me. And I'm so glad they prayed because on Tuesday I can feel the anxieties wash away because I found fellowship. But I also know what it is to have faith. I also know what it means to be to believe that the, that the sun will shine tomorrow even in the midst of the darkest night. I have faith to believe that trouble won't last always even in the midst of trouble. I have faith to believe that the storm is passing over even when the winds are blowing and the, the lightning is flashing. That's why somebody said I've seen the lightning flash and I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sin break is dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus telling me, still to fight on. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. And I know it's the Sunday before election day, and you may be filled with anxiety. But Paul says here are two ways to ease your anxiety. Won't you find fellowship? Won't you find faith? Won't you keep running to see what the end will be? And this is my promise. It'll be better than this. It'll be it'll be better than this. It 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 will be better than this. You too can declare with Paul that the peace of God, which surpasseth all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Our brothers and my sisters, it may find it may be difficult. To find peace with so much happening in the world. But I urge you today that if you want to find that peace that eases anxieties, I know we're socially distant, but we have to find fellowship. And it may be hard with so much negativity in the world to find faith in something positive. But I offer you today both of those things, fellowship and faith. I'll start with faith. I welcome you today to declare your faith in Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ in which gives me the strength to believe that trouble won't last always, that this year won't last forever. 
I welcome you to have faith in Jesus Christ. You're not perfect, neither am I. I'm not perfect, neither are you. And I know it may be difficult to imagine that one, that, that our lives, that our lives, I'm not talking about the rest of the mess in the rest of the world, I'm talking about the mess in our own lives can get any better, but it can. Have faith. Follow Jesus. If you want to have faith, if you want to follow Jesus, I welcome you today to visit our website, www.newmtolive.org slash save. That's www.newmtolive.org slash save. Fill out the form or call us at 757-545-6566 and we'll get back to you within 24 hours so that we can pray with you and begin you on this journey. You want faith in something larger in this country. You want faith in something that can get you through dark moments. Follow Jesus, but also fellowship. None of us can do this by ourselves. None of us can do this by ourselves. We need people who are on our side that are pulling for, for us, that are helping us to, to give us a Thanksgiving basket. Just give us a call to be on our side. We welcome you to join this church. Find fellowship here. I invite you. I invite you. I invite you. It makes life a whole lot easier when you have fellowship. Won't you join us by calling us at 757 545 6566? 757-545-6566 or by visiting our website www.newmtolive.org slash save filling out the form and we'll be back in contact with you within 24 hours just to welcome you into the fellowship of our church family. If you'd like to declare your faith in Jesus Christ or join this fellowship of believers here at New Mount Olive, pray with me now. Almighty and everlasting God, I come before you right now professing my faith in Jesus Christ. I believe that he died for me that he rolls with all power in his hands, power to forgive sin, power to give everlasting life. And so now I pray that you might forgive me and allow me to follow you as I try to make my life better and the world better. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us in that prayer. If you prayed it with us, won't you reach out to us? Won't you prepare now as we celebrate communion, getting your bread uh, and your juice in front of you. God bless you.
power to save then in a nobler sweeter song I'll sing thy power to Once again, welcome back to the Sanctuary of New Mount Isla. This is the first Sunday of November, and as such, we celebrate Holy Communion. While we remain socially distant from one another, we celebrate this moment of communion together at the same time to represent that we are still spiritually connected with one another. We invite everyone, whether you're a member, a family member, or a friend of New Mount Olive, to celebrate with us as we celebrate with Christ. Here's all you need. If you have some grape juice, even water, if you have uh, a bread, a cracker, we invite you to place those things in front of you, in front of you now, and hear now this invitation to you, to anybody, to everybody who wants to be close to Christ and a member of the community. You who do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, making your humble confession before Almighty God, meekly kneeling. At this moment, we invite you to get into a posture of prayer, whatever that posture of prayer is in your home. Won't you join with me now in a posture of prayer? We pray now the general confession, which is to say all of us recognize that none of us are perfect. We pray now for not just Christ's forgiveness, but that we might have the strength to follow him in a more perfect way. If you know the words, won't you say it with me? If you do not, it's all right. Just say amen with me at the end if you believe it. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, make of all things, judge of all people. We acknowledge and be well out manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty. Provoking most justly a wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent. And a heartless sorrow for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful God. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Together we say, Amen. At this time, if you have your communion elements in front of you, that is the juice and the bread, won't you uncover those elements? Won't you listen to me carefully as we prepare to sup this communion meal together? Listen carefully. Almighty God, our heavenly creator, who have a tender mercy did give your only son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole wide world, and did institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his most precious death until his coming again. Hear us, most merciful creator. We humbly beseech you and grant that we receiving these your creatures of bread and wine, according to your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be made partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who on the same night that he was betrayed took the bread. Won't you take the bread in your hand? And when it had given thanks, he broke it. Won't you break the bread? And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. Won't you take the cup of juice or liquid in your hand? When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of it, for this is my body of the New Testament, which was shared for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall. 
Drink it in remembrance of me. Won't you now take the bread once again in your hand? The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was broken for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. For the forgiveness of all of your sins and the preservation of your soul unto everlasting life. Please take it. Please eat it with thanksgiving in your heart. What can wash away my sins is nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again is nothing but the blood of Jesus. It soothes my doubts. It calms my fears and it dries all my tears. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never, ever, ever lose its power. This is a cup of juice, but it's a symbol of the very real blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed two, almost 2,000 years ago for the forgiveness of all of your sins and the preservation of your soul unto everlasting life. Please take that cup. Please drink it now with thanksgiving in your heart. Amen. Amen. Won't you now clean up your communion area, return it to its earliest state. Now join with me in prayer, praying that prayer which Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Arise, my God's children, go in peace and may the God of peace go with you. As we prepare to conclude the service, let us sing one more hymn together. I know it was the blood. For me, one day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. my brother thank you for joining us in worship today i pray that after hearing the word of god today uh we can we can learn to allow the peace of god which surpasses 
all understanding, to rule our thoughts and control our lives, even in a crazy and chaotic world. It won't always be like this, my brother and my sister. And with us together, and God as our head, I believe we'll make it to a better day. Take care, be at peace, my sister and my brother. Thank you for joining us in worship today. Brothers, remember to join us on our conference call on Thursday uh, as we plan uh, our Men's Day celebration for the year 2020. Please remember to give to our missionary society as we seek to do ministry in the midst of a pandemic during the holiday season. Uh, please join us in all of these endeavors. My family, I love you. God keep you. God love you. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide over your life now and forever. Together, let's say amen, amen, and praise God. You've come to worship. Won't you go and serve? I love your family. Thank you for joining us in worship.